You are listening to Three Kitchens, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network. Locally grown, community supported. Join your hosts, Aaron Walker, Heather Dyer, and Sarah Soma Syndrome. What's for dinner? Today's episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by the Alberta Podcast Network. Locally grown, community supported. Hey food friends, are you looking for something new to satisfy that sweet tooth? Or have you ever wondered what bacon flavored vodka tastes like? Check out the Mess Hall podcast with Avery and Lena for fun taste testing reviews of all sorts of foods and learn some fun trivia about where and how they came to be. We've had so much fun creating and sharing with them over the last couple weeks and we know you'll love listening to them too. You can find the Mess Hall podcast at www.albertapodcastnetwork.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome. Welcome to Three Kitchens. I'm Heather. I'm here, as always, with my <laughs> lovely co-hosts, Sarah and Erin. Hello. 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 Good morning. Hello. How is it going today? Feeling good. Yep. Yeah. Not awesome. a bad Tuesday. I, it's sunny. It's nice. Hey, that's saying something because Sarah hates Tuesdays. I do so. hate Tuesdays. <laughs> I was going to say, now it's all going to shit, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just jinx here's where Here's where it jumps off and dives. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be my uh, segue here. I'm just going to mm-hmm. run with that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that dive, have you guys ever heard of the Biosphere 2 experiment? No. Nope. Oh, yay. I can't <laughs> wait to do this. <laughs> the excitement. Uh, okay. So in, I believe, 1987 or 1988, they began building what they called the Biosphere 2 complex out in the desert in Arizona. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be an experiment to see if they could build a self-sustaining, completely enclosed environment with no external inputs or outputs. So they called it Biosphere 2 because the planet is Biosphere 1. Oh, I see. Okay. So even though it sounds like it might be the second experiment, right? they're nerds. So they're, they get to do fun stuff like that. So you should look up this picture of this incredible complex. You can Google it. Oh, wow. It's big. It's very yeah. big. It was a three acre <laughs> complex that they constructed it had a small rainforest a mangrove a desert and a coral reef oh wow a coral reef why would it have a desert is it not in the desert why do we need another desert <laughs> they want it to be exclusive like uh, they don't want it to have anything to do with the outside environment so completely self sustaining i'm not right? sure why it needed a desert in it cuz i'm not sure how a desert is pre- you can't grow yeah like your life but yeah yeah I guess certain types of life live in the desert maybe I guess the scientists figured this out right (laughs) I'm putting I'm putting quotation marks on that because as my segue indicated it dove this was not a successful experiment oh this did not work or go well so this place was completely contained they had to grow their own stuff they had to harvest they had to completely sustain themselves there were seven people that were let loose <laughs> let loose so procreate <laughs> you make it sound i know it, it's it, we release release the kraken okay like they're wild animals. <laughs> at the end of the year there were 13 people oh, <laughs> it was not that much fun i don't think so okay. they were in there from 1991 until 1993 three I no believe. two oh. years for god's sakes who who signed up for that experiment i don't know but the picture of the people who signed up is hilarious like talk about sci-fi movie from the 80s oh, right God, yeah. they're, they're all like wearing like little red jumpsuits games. yeah like they yeah. look like squid games uh, <laughs> participants yikes what happened in there so eventually all the hummingbirds and bees did die that oh. they had initially inoculated into the biosphere so all their crops were no longer being pollinated right oh right some sort of nematode took over the soils and cockroaches were just going of course survival of the fittest right (laughs) well (laughs) survival of the roaches yeah (laughs) anyway while they were able to consume all that they needed for nutrients 
in yeah. terms of vitamins and minerals. They got the full spectrum, but they actually weren't able to produce or consume enough calories to sustain themselves. Oh. So even though they had their full nutritional content, they weren't getting the caloric intake in their diet. They had no oils or oh. fats for cooking with. Oh, Somebody didn't think this through. Yeah, I think after the first few months, like the whole scientific team quit. Oh. It was like a complete disaster. But Eventually, these people stayed on for two years. Was anyone, did he, anyone even remember they were in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there were definitely people monitoring everything because, oh, okay. sorry, 10 months into the mission, the, the project's advisory board completely <laughs> just quit. Right. I think there was a lot of conflict about what was going on. A lot of the people that were in the biosphere weren't actually scientists. Some people hmm. said it was more of an art exhibition rather than a scientific thing. Anyway, you know, like oh, just with red jumpsuits with red jumpsuits. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just became a complete disaster. I believe that the experiment officially ended when two of the participants that escaped the biosphere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> broke glass to get out and break you mean the they seal. were locked they were locked in like they couldn't just leave if they wanted to oh my god what holy shit oh yeah it, it's a, like i said it dove and when i say dove like i mean deep <laughs> they should have had a safe word like i'm gonna yeah. leave now <laughs> they need a safe word oh my god yeah <laughs> i feel like i <laughs> Sarah's lost it. Yeah, She's Sarah's lost, lost it. it here. I'm reading this from the New York <laughs> Times, just so that you know my source here. Uh, in short, the Biosphere 2 experiment failed to generate sufficient breathable air, drinkable oh. water, and adequate food for eight humans. It cost over $200 million. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. God. One of the goals or ideas in this experiment was the thought of having these enclosed ecosystems that we want to put out on other planets. Like, well, of course, yeah. Mars. Mm -hmm. They still keep it open today. It's part of the University of Arizona now learning through it. Maybe what it should have been from the start. <laughs> Is anybody else thinking Lord of the Flies? Like imagine the people inside like driving each other absolutely totally. nuts. Totally. And like all the yeah. drama and what kind of psychological impact did it have on those people? Well, if they're breaking out <laughs> of the facility, my, my goodness. God. All sorts of not good stuff. So it doesn't sound like it works so great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so maybe don't be the first person to sign yeah. yourself up to go to Mars. I would imagine. <laughs> so, and the moral of this story is that anything, you know, many things that came out of the 90s just sucked. <laughs> Think fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I got to gain Thank some you, composure Aaron. here. Let's, let's... <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed what I, I, I did this week. <laughs> I really that was that. that was fun. Anyway, right. we'll, we'll link to it if you want to learn about crazy people in the early yes. '90s. Okay, well let's take it. Let's go in a different direction. Let's talk well, about Heather. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about some food. Some um, food with calories in it. <laughs> yes, there's definitely some calories and some fats. Okay, all right. So you guys know that I am a Pinterest love. I'm a I'm a Pinterest fan. Right. Oh, speaking of Pinterest, real quick, if you also love Pinterest like I do, <laughs> listeners. Three Kitchens podcast is on Pinterest That's and you can right. find our pins that all link to episodes. Mm. So go follow us uh, if you love Pinterest as much as I do. Okay, so I come across all sorts of random food things because I go down these rabbit holes mm -hmm. because if you it's like any social media thing if you click on enough things you start to be fed similar right. things yes. right and I came across a recipe for <laughs> I'm sorry I can't even take a sip off She's... my coffee right now because I just feel like I'm gonna spit it out just thinking of that biodome story okay I'm sorry okay, okay I'm listening I'm listening okay my Pinterest path led me to a West African peanut soup mm. and I don't know why this there's something about it that just really appeals to me that just sounds so yummy and different and it has okay. a number of things in it that I'm not accustomed to okay. cooking mm -hmm. and that intrigues me because that's what this yes. that's what's so fun about this whole thing for me mm -hmm. is trying stuff I never have eaten 
and right. have never thought to make. And perhaps you haven't either. And so I can introduce I've you to something new too. I've never ever thought of putting peanuts in a soup. So you got me right away. I'm just thinking of like saute sauce. So yeah, um, I know. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I was thinking of too, which I love. And I mean, yeah. put it in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's I, not I, quite that. It's not <laughs> quite that. So I found this recipe on a site called No Dish Respect. Dot com. And it's a couple of uh, chefs in the UK who have kind of compiled it. It's all kinds of cooking and all kinds of cuisine okay. and really an mm. interesting um, site if anyone wants to go check it out. This recipe is actually a family recipe of one of the chefs. It's from Ghana. It's described as a classic West African stew packed with peanuts, spice, and big flavors. Mm. And the Ghanaian name for it, I hope I'm going <laughs> to... I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Nketenkwan. I okay. hope I've said that right. I'm just going to call it peanut stew because I don't, I don't want to say that word again because okay. I've probably messed it up. So essentially what we've got in here is peanuts in the form of peanut butter, natural peanut butter, okay. tomatoes, meat, vegetables, and spices. And the spices will vary between family recipes. Right. In this one, we've got things like coriander, nutmeg, paprika, pepper, thyme, uh, bay leaves, and then there's scotch bonnet oh, or habanero. Yes. So, so there's excited. some spice in here. Okay. Wow. And the traditional vegetables that go into it. Here's where I'm getting into some things I'm not necessarily accustomed to. Okra. I think we've talked about okra before and yeah. Sarah had some tips. So I'm going to come back to that in a second because okay. I, I need to make some notes about what to do with the okra. Garden eggs which are small, round, yellow eggplants. They call them oh, garden yeah, eggs. Yeah. Oh, I, didn't I don't know. know. Yellow, okay. Yeah, they're like yellow, greenish. I don't know if I can buy them. I'm going to have to look. And if not, I might have to sub another type of eggplant. Okay, I'm going to see what I can find. Because there's also West African palm oil in here. Oh. And I don't know how likely I am to find it. It's a bright red, yeah. the kind of thing that will stain oh, stuff. Okay. You know, it's like this, apparently this really super intense colored palm oil. So if you can't find it, I love when recipes offer substitutions okay. because sometimes we can't find these things, right? Mm-hmm. So um, they say if you can't find the palm oil, use a neutral tasting vegetable oil or clarified butter. Or okay. So I think I have options here. Okay. So it also has stock, of course. Um, okay. And I have homemade chicken stock in my freezer. So I'll just use that. Oh, yum. Oh, the meat. Uh, this recipe is using chicken. Okay. So chicken thighs and drumsticks. But you could use any kind of meat. They highly recommend oxtail or mm-hmm. pork, mutton, goat, even fish. And they have an option to make it vegan as well. So this recipe is like very adaptable to what whatever you want it to be. This sounds like the clean the fridge soup of West <laughs> Africa. <laughs> of West <laughs> Africa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, delicious sounding. And then there's also ground dried shrimp, which um, apparently in West Africa, there's a popular um, seasoning cube that they use, which is basically powdered shrimp, like a bullion cube, right? Okay, yeah. The reason you use it is it's a natural concentrated source of MSG. But there's a whole bunch of other options here, one of which is mushroom powder. Ta-da. Oh, so I have made this before, as you know, mushroom powder, dehydrate mushrooms, grind them up. It's amazing. It's right. so mm-hmm. yummy. And so I have already made some, I have some for you both. And I'm going to use my homemade mushroom powder instead of the shrimp. Yeah. You could also use shrimp paste, mm. fish sauce, kelp powder, or just pure MSG. So, like. Umami basically. Is that mm-hmm. uh, okay? You could use anchovy paste if you wanted. That, mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I think you, I think there's all kinds of options for that as well. Hmm. I was just grazing through the mushroom powders over at the Cambrian pharmacy while oh. I was waiting for a prescription to be filled. Oh, they have mushroom powders there? They have mushroom powder mm. and they had a whole bunch of different ones and like specific mushroom mixes. And Yes, I have noticed that too. Yeah, yeah so I kind of got lost in that while I was waiting okay. for a prescription and Oh, I can't wait. Okay. What else goes in here? Tomatoes, onion, garlic, ginger. I think we talked about the spices, the hot pepper. You so there you go. The scotch bonnet. I don't know. Can I buy a scotch bonnet? I've never you can. purchased such a thing. I think I've seen stuff in Safeway. Mm-hmm. If I can find one, I will. You so do. what's your tip, Sarah, on cooking and preparing okra? Okra. <laughs> I love okra, but I don't like the slime that comes off of yeah. okra. So yeah. what I do is I tend to slice it up crosswise. 
not lengthwise. Okay. Okay. And yep. then put it on like a paper napkin and I dry it overnight. And then I pan fry it. And once oh, you pan okay. fry it, all the slime goes away. And then I put it in my soup? Right. And then you put it in your soup. And there's no slime then. The recipe is just throw your okra on in there and right. boil it. So you and can see the picture don't... with the green okra. It's yeah, just yeah. the full on pieces oh, of okra. Right. Just toss on in there. Is it different though if you cook it whole like that? Mm, it'll still be slimy when you bite into it. It says, Okra adds some delightful texture to this soup thanks to its unique gelatinous properties, which also helps to thicken the soup too. So this person loves the delightful gelatinous right. properties of okra. Ah. If you do, <laughs> perhaps we don't. Substitutions for okra could be things like zucchini, green beans, bell peppers, mushrooms, uh, black eyed beans, potatoes, pretty much like you said, clear out the fridge. Like if you want a different kind of veggie, yeah. but I'm going to try to stick to the traditional recipe as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I think okra and eggplant go so well together. So. And I hope I can find these garden eggs because yeah. it stays whole, right? You don't cut them up. Right. You just put them in. So in your, oh, your bowl yum. of peanut stew, you'd have a nice little That's round. So fun. I like that. Now, I wonder yeah. if the yellow eggplant or the green ones are just an unripe version of the purple ones. And so they have a different flavor. Yeah, good question. Oh, this sounds so yeah. interesting. Yeah, These are all so flavors that sound... Sounds amazing. Totally... Yeah. And the, pe and the peanuts come into it in the form of just a natural peanut butter. Peanuts um, grow there. That's why this is a thing. They're, they call them ground nuts, ground nuts mm -hmm. right. apparently. So it's also sometimes called ground nut stew or ground nut soup. Fun. This sounds delicious. And then uh, you serve it with like a scoop of rice or uh, yams or potatoes or... Oh, they also, in Ghana, traditionally, they eat it with fufu which is fun to say. A fufu mm. is a pounded starchy ball of cassava. Ooh, yum. I don't actually know what that is. <laughs> it's like yucca. Is it a vegetable? It's like cassava a root. or yucca. It's a root oh. and it's very starchy. Super duper starchy. It kind of reminds me of potato dumplings. Like if you oh. just boil it up, it's like a potato dumpling. I, Ooh, that I've had some good. fresh before. I've never found it here, but if you're where they grow the cassava or the yucca, it's it's a really interesting starch. And I think that's mm. like, it's like very high in carb. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should have grown it in the biosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Sorry. Don't get me started. They should have grown okay. some nuts. Come on. What a horrible thing. <laughs> I love all the mystery flavors that are going to go into this. And then the spice in there. Yeah. yeah. I hope you go with the scotch bonnet. Do I need yeah. rubber gloves? Do I need like an N95 mask to deal with and glass goggles to deal with the habit? So the scotch I bonnet? imagine you're just putting one <laughs> no. scotch bonnet in there, right? I believe. I would say for uh, sure, get some gloves on. <laughs> Or you're going to have like spicy fingers. What does it say here about it? Oh, it says two hot chili Ooh. peppers, such as scotch bonnet or habanero. Ooh, too, I might need to too. tone it down. Oh, come on. Don't tone it down. Let's see how it works. I mean, if it's too spicy, just eat it with rice. I guess so. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah's like, yeah, do it. And Aaron and I are both like, oh. Uh. <laughs> Stay tuned. Just find out how many peppers I put in my stew. Today's episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by Park Power. In Alberta, you get to choose who to buy your internet, electricity, and natural gas from. If you choose Park Power, you are choosing a positive local business. Plus, Park Power shares its profits with local not-for-profits that are working to make a difference for their communities. Shopping local is very important to Park Power's owner, Chris Kozowski, and we love local here at the Alberta Podcast Network, so it's a great fit. Learn more at parkpower.ca. Okay, so we're back. We're talking about how the peanut stew turned out. It's a bit of an involved recipe. It took some time and I yeah. don't even, I feel like I don't even really know where to begin to explain how to go about the process, but I will try. Okay. okay. So first thing is you kind of gather all your spices and you're going to put chopped onion, all your spices, garlic, ginger, and one of the hot peppers, whatever okay. hot pepper you happen to use. I did not find the super hot scotch bonnet or habanero. I ended up with serrano 
chili because that's the best I could find. Okay. You're putting all of that into a food processor. Okay. And making kind of like a paste and you need a little bit of water just to loosen it up. Okay. Okay. So you kind of have this yummy smelling Mm -hmm. onion and spice paste. That sounds delicious. Mm. And you put that in your pot with a little bit of African palm oil, which I found at a local store close by. I just stopped in there. It's called Mama K's Afro-Caribbean Market. It's on 4th Street and about 41st across from the veterinarian there. Okay. okay kitty corner to the high school you know in that oh right. okay right 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 yeah. really nice person in there assured me my stew was going to be great okay <laughs> but she was very nice and she told me it was going to be good so <laughs> there you go <laughs> first you're going to brown your meat mm-hmm. so i browned my chicken i had thighs Ooh, yeah. and drumsticks okay you brown it in the palm oil you'd remove it when it's nice and brown on the outside then saute your spice mix then you're going to put your peanut butter into that Mm -hmm. and give it a little more time add your tomatoes canned tomatoes and tomato paste get that going together and now you're going to put in your broth okay Mm -hmm. I used chicken broth I actually made it the same day because I realized I was low but I had a carcass in the (laughs) freezer so I made the broth ahead of time so I had this nice fresh chicken broth and once you've mixed so you've got your spices your onions your tomatoes your broth all of that together use an immersion blender and blend it all up unfortunately for me my immersion blender had decided to bite it like the week before so I had to do it in batches in my blender right Oh, dang. <laughs> it took some time. I made a You should have said like, something. Like, you could have had my emergent blender. <laughs> I just, I was like, I wasn't thinking about it until I read that in the recipe. I'm like, oh, right. Anyway, right. it was fine. It was just messier. I had more dishes to wash. Mm-hmm. Now you've got, once you've blended that all up, you've got your soup base. And it is a lot. Like, I don't know what size that big Dutch oven is that I have, but it's big and it was like full. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's this, it says 10 servings. I don't know. It's a huge recipe. Okay. Then, so you've got your soup base, you put your chicken back in and you add your vegetables. Mm-hmm. So I had a little trouble finding nice looking okra. The okra that mm. I found at the store was like kind of brown, wrinkly, like it was not fresh. It didn't look mm. good. So right. I ended up buying frozen baby okra. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I did saute it ahead of time. I kind of fried it up in a, in a cast iron pan and you could see kind of the gummy stuff coming off of it right, right. in the pan, which was <laughs> great. That I was like, okay, this is, I think this is working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I kind of just, I had that sauteing a little bit while I was doing the other stuff. I did not find garden eggs, which were those little kind of white eggplants. eggplants. Yeah. Right. So I used the Indian eggplants, which are the same size and shape, but they're purple. Mm-hmm. And right. I just quartered them. So you put your okra and your eggplant in there, plus your other chili. So it just said to put it in. So I threw it in whole. I didn't know what I should do with that. So I just threw it in whole. And then you're simmering. It says with the lid on for 15 minutes and then off for 30. Okay. Okay. I did the 15 minutes. I took the lid off and then I just kind of left it. Like, I think it probably simmered on my stove for, I don't know, close to an hour. I always think like nothing wrong with soup sitting a little longer, right? Right. No, I agree. And I think it throw a bay leaf in there as well while it's going. And that's it but it it takes like all these steps it steps, takes right. some time right mm-hmm. yeah and it's always that like unfamiliar steps Maybe. so you're a little bit like what's next I feel like I always read the same recipe or the same line in the recipe again and again being like oh yeah right oh yeah right <laughs> yeah and I didn't like to know like well when do I add the mm-hmm. peanut butter and when do I add the tomatoes <laughs> right when do I just to make the soup base was like you're not just like sauteing some stuff and adding some stuff and like having to put it in the food processor first and then saute it and then yeah do some stuff and then blend the whole thing like right. Right. it just felt like wow this is an all day it says 30 minutes no right. <laughs> you know like in the recipe where it says prep time 30 mm-hmm. minutes mm-hmm. yeah right maybe if you had that immersion blender it would have been like much that easier, might have made right? it a bit it better just been one pot and then you'd be like <laughs> Done. It would have been easier, but not, I don't know, but a lot faster, really. I made some rice when I served it to my family. We had it on rice. Mm-hmm. And I am so curious to know what you 
what you guys thought of this because I don't even know how to explain what I thought of it. So go ahead. I also made rice with it. You gave me a huge jar of this. Mm -hmm. So I only had half of it yesterday. The other half I will eat today. Oh, you must have liked it enough to want to eat I, the other half. <laughs> I did like it. <laughs> if that's, there's a hint. Um, <laughs> I thought it was really tasty. I loved the big pieces of eggplant in there. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really tasty. The okra, it was sort of whole when it went into like, because it was mm -hmm. bigger chunks. When I heated it up again, it kind of like fell apart and diffused into the soup. So I would say like as much as I was trying to find the okra that I had scooped out and I realized that it had kind of it falls apart. fallen apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I didn't really get chunk of okra and it there was no and I thought the heat level was it wasn't spicy at all but it was it had a good flavor to it. I see how it could be spicier. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. liked that it wasn't super spicy at all. So what did you think, Sarah? So first mm. of all, I was slightly disappointed that there was no <laughs> scotch bonnet. <laughs> I know. I mean, I have never I don't know if I've ever tasted anything with that in it. So that was a spice level I really wanted to come face to face with. But <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it was the the flavors were fantastic. It was hearty. Um, now, you said that this was a West African dish, right? So mm -hmm. when I was in Korea, I had friends who dated people from West Africa. And so we used to eat a lot of West African cuisine. And there was one thing that I noticed about West African cuisine that I got reminded of in this dish. And this is just a palate thing for me. I think it's so like it's a nine out of 10. But what would make it a 10 out of 10 if there was a little bit more acidity in this stew? Like I found it a little bit like if there was acidity, everything would pop just a whole bunch more. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, I thought it was a great stew, like very interesting, um, great with rice. I think it would be great with pasta or mm -hmm. noodles even. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. But I think if there was some sort of acidity that could be put back into that, I think it would just make this stew a whole bunch better. Oh, you mm -hmm. know what it reminded me of? Kind of like a goulash. Even mm -hmm. though I know there was no red meat in it but just like the the texture of it being so thick it kind of reminded me of a goulash which could go with rice or with like an egg noodle or whatever yeah mm. yeah and also I added my own step which was after it had cooked to take the chicken out take the meat off the right. bone and put the meat back in Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I don't like to have yes. a big meat on the bone in my right. plate. And I knew my kids would also have trouble eating it that way. So right. um, I took the extra time to take the meat off the bone, leave the bone and the skins aside. But yeah. I did cook it with it, with the bones. Mm -hmm. And now that you said that, I think I would have liked this better with red meat. I think it would have been like, to me, it, it was missing richness. Like I felt like I kept saying, I was saying to my family, I'm, I'm like, it's, I thought it would be richer. I thought it would be like, really like bold, mm. something bold, not, and not just spice level, but like more depth. I don't, I don't know. Depth. I can't even Deep explain. Depth. Do you think the shrimp powder would have yes. changed it? That's it. It. That's what I kind of wonder. I thought that too. Yeah. Because yeah, I used homemade mushroom powder, which was one of the subs listed yeah. Yeah. for that umami that you can add, that you want to add to it. And I think you're right. Because I thought that too, maybe the shrimp would have made a difference yeah. to it. Like I almost thought about adding salt to it while I was eating it. Right. Mm -hmm. And acidity would have done the same thing with as salt, right? I see what you say by missing depth. And when you said acidity, I was like, yes, I think that's right. There's tomato, but not a lot of, so like you almost want to like squirt something over it. <laughs> when you went to that West African store, mm. or was it a Caribbean and African store? Afro-Caribbean. Afro-Caribbean store. Called. Did you look for that shrimp bouillon? I did not, okay. but I know I did look at her website ahead of time and it's, it was listed. That type of bouillon was listed. Um, mm. I just thought, well, I'm not going to bother because I already made the mushroom powder, right, right, right. which I mm. quite like. I do like that mushroom like if you just smell that stuff, it's like mm -hmm. oh, amazing. It so but funny. I, th yeah. I think you might be right about the shrimp. I just, I just want to. Ever since you've 
talked about that shrimp bouillon, I, I just want to mm. get some because I think it would go very well with some of my Asian dishes. I, I think I might just stop by at that store and get some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. <laughs> I just wasn't wowed. I thought it was going to be something that was like, wow, I've been like missing this my whole life because it's so, so many interesting ingredients go into it that I thought it would just be more mm -hmm. maybe I had too high of expectations <laughs> I don't know it was the same experience I had when I had Nigerian food it was mm. like so close but there was something and some depth sort of missing in it and I didn't know I didn't cook then mm -hmm. so I would not have called it acidity then but mm. uh, this mm -hmm. time when I ate it I, I was reminded of that time and like well what's missing in this but it's good yeah. in every other way. Like the flavors are there, the the good ingredients are there. Like it's an interesting taste. It's got that peanutty yumminess. Everything is there except for one ingredient that I think could just zhuzh it up, right? Yeah. My husband really liked it. He was like, I, I think you should make it again. Because I was like, he said, do you think, you'll, he always asked when I make something new, do you think you'll make it again? And I was like, nah, I don't know. He's like, well, I think you should. Because <laughs> he really liked it. And the kids thought, oh, it's good. They didn't mm -hmm. love the eggplant. They don't, I think it's a texture. They don't love right. the egg. They ate it, but they were like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. 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 But even the one who does not like peanut butter, we oh, all made yeah. a big effort to just say it's peanuts because he'll eat peanuts, but not peanut butter. He's weird. Oh. Um, so we, so we made a big effort to just say peanuts. So he thought it was made with peanuts Excellent. and he even liked it. Oh, yeah, good, there you go. good, good, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The peanut wasn't super strong in there. Yeah. I, somehow I thought maybe, it, maybe that's where I was expecting something different because you think like, like I think of a peanut saute sauce and yeah. I think of the flavors in there and it, but it didn't have that. It was no. much more tomato saucy than I think I expected it to be like hmm. the tomato base of it. Again, that's like the goulash base to me, that yeah. tomato plus tomato paste kind of, right. kind of base. Maybe it would be good with some of the meat you've got kicking around in your freezer <laughs> and a splash of wine try a splash of wine next time who knows yeah. like maybe that might just be the acidity and pop you need right at the end like don't even cook it for too yeah. much yeah. longer just after. finish it with it yeah yeah Could be. it might actually work I just I think red meat would would be a better flavor I think it the chicken was is. a bit too mild yeah the chicken right. doesn't add a ton to that so what's the traditional meat that goes into this then well uh, so the recipe was written as a it's the family recipe. It's the one mm -hmm. this chef's um, mom and grandma made and, he, and they made it with chicken. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just says you can also substitute just about anything. Like I think they use chicken because it's cheap and easy and quick okay. cooks quickly. Yeah, right. But it says there's no rule. You can, you can use beef, pork, mutton, goat, fish. Right, right. Or a vegan friend. They have a vegan friendly version on this website as well. No dish respect.com. I think it was great. Mm -hmm. I think it was very interesting. I'm glad you made it. Um, I'm hoping to grow some eggplants this summer. That's my hope. Should I get some? I would like to make this for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would I think definitely, definitely want to do this like in the fall. Like, I just want to like yeah. cuddle up with this soup. And yeah. read a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Be a great stew for cool weather, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. I would cut it in half. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it makes so much. It made, right. Like, that was to the brim. You'll see, I have a little video of it just, like, simmering <laughs> on the stove. And that giant pot is, like, to the brim. Like, it makes you nervous. You cannot fit one more <laughs> eggplant slice in there. Like, <gasps> And I think something like mushrooms, Ooh, like actual yeah. like yes. chunks of mushrooms would be really good in there. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. I think if you didn't totally. have the okra, yeah. I think zucchini would be good in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we first ate it, the okra stayed oh, together yeah. quite well. I think it's reheating it because yeah. then I had reheated it and it fell apart more. So I think it's the um, yeah longer it's cooked, it falls apart. But yeah, I didn't yeah. mind it like falling apart. I was like, oh, now it looks kind of stringy and weird, but it was still really yeah, tasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you should make it again. I think this is a definitely a winner. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I notice like lamb on sale, like the little lamb chops. And so when they're on sale, I'll that I'll would be buy good. them and then just toss them in the freezer. Yeah. I think it'd be good with lamb. Oh, good stuff. Heather. I think there's some versatility to it. I think you yeah. can make it kind of how you want it. And I would love to try it with some of the suggestions that you guys mm -hmm. had. I think 
among the three of us, we could probably really zhuzh it up. That's right. Mm -hmm. No offense to to all the the folks from Ghana (laughs) (laughs) whose soup this is. But that's the best part is taking something and making it the way it says and then like incorporating it and making your own because then it becomes your own expression of your flavors and what you and your family like. And I really wanted that hot pepper yeah. too. I really, I was a, I was scared of the idea of a scotch bonnet, but then after having had this, it was so mild that I thought maybe that's like the predominant, maybe that's what they're going for is mm. just like a hot spicy soup. Maybe that's yeah. what it's supposed to be. You and, and you, and you got to thank Ghana for introducing the uh, shrimp bouillon. Cause I like, I'm really excited about a new ingredient in my pantry. Cause I think I've really, really utilized that yeah. one. Yeah, let us know what you do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. In fact, probably in about three weeks' time. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> And now for the fine print. We at Three Kitchens gratefully acknowledge we are telling these stories in the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations in Southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We honor the rich tradition of oral storytellers on this land who have come before us. You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. If you like and subscribe on your podcast player, that helps more people find us. It tastes pretty good, but what the heck is okra?